Good morning, everybody. Today we are going to solve uh, an MCQ paper, October, November 2017, one two paper. This course is Physics uh, 5054. Let's start. So you can see now we have question number one on your screen, which list contains only scalar quantities. Scalar quantities have only magnitude, they, have, they don't have an don't have that action. So uh, D is the answer, length, mass, and speed. Length is the scalar, mass is the scalar, speed is the scalar. So question number one, D is the choice. Okay, on your screen, we have question number two. Right now, it's showing on your screen. A manufacturer measures the three dimensions of a wooden floor tile using three different instruments. The approximate dimensions of the tile are shown. You can see the width is 0 0.08 meter, the length is 0 0.4 meter, the thickness is 0 0.005 meter. If you convert them into centimeters, uh, the length will be 40 centimeter. For, for measuring the 40 centimeter, a meter rule can be used. For width, uh, which is 0 0.08 meter, if you convert into centimeters, multiplied with 100, you will have eight centimeter for a length of eight centimeter one year caliper can be used and for if you look at the thickness which is 0 0.005 meter you multiply it with the 100 you will get 0.5 uh, centimeter for thickness you can use micrometer 0.5 uh, centimeter half a centimeter this thickness can be measured with a micrometer so B can, uh, for question number two, uh, length can be measured with the help of a meter rule, the thickness can be measured with the, a micrometer, and the width can be measured with the help of a uh, caliper, one caliper. So A is the choice. Now, on your screen, we are having question number three. Uh, it says this, the speed time, the speed time graph represents a short journey. Here, the speed time graph is shown, and the speed is increasing, increasing with the constant rate. He says, which distance time graph represents the same journey? The speed was increasing. Here, the four distance time graphs are given. And you know the slope of the distance time graph represents the speed. So because the speed is increasing, the slope of the distance time graph should be increasing. So the distance time graph must be an increasing curve. So A is the answer. Question number three, A is because only the A is the increasing curve. B is decreasing curve and uh, C has a constant uh, slope and the D uh, has zero slope. So B, C, D, they are wrong. A is the right option because it's increasing. The uh, slope is increasing means the speed is increasing. Now, on your screen, we have question number uh, four is on your screen. A free fall skydiver jumps from a plane. As he falls, there is a force acting upwards and a force acting downwards on his body. This produces produce a resultant force. Before he reaches terminal velocity, how do the size of the two forces change? You know, when you take a jump, the weight, there will be no significant change in the amount of weight which is acting downward. So the downward force will remain the same. But when you jump, your speed starts increasing. When your speed increases, the air resistance starts increasing. And the air resistance is in upward direction. So the upward force will be increasing. And the resultant force is the difference between the downward and the upward force. And at the start, the because the upward force was not uh, was not there, and but gradually the upward force started increasing, and the downward force remained the same. So the difference between them will start decreasing. So the downward force stays the same, the upward force increases, and the resultant force decreases. For question number four, the choice is C. 
let's move to the next question on your screen. Now we have the diagram shows two objects on a beam balance. The beam balance is in equilibrium. Which quantities may be different? Um, when you put something on a beam balance, both objects will have same masses. The both objects will have the same moment about the pivot. The both objects will have the same weight. One thing which can be different in, in the case of a beam balance, the two objects, if they are in equilibrium on a beam balance, one thing might be different, that is the volume of the two objects. So his question is, which quantities may be different? C is the choice, the volume of the two objects. Now we move to question number six. Here he has shown two blocks are joined together. The, and there are two different um, blocks and they are joined together. They're made of the different materials. The first block, you know, its dimensions are given one centimeter by one centimeter by one centimeter. So we can calculate its volume and uh, its density is given that is six grams per centimeter cube. And then we can find its mass, the mass of the first block. So, uh, you know, the density is equal to mass divided by volume and the mass, we, mass is density multiplied volume. So six multiply one centimeter cube and uh, you will get the mass as six grams. For the second block, which is on the right side, the dimensions are two by one by one. So the volume will be two multiply one multiply one and the volume will be two centimeter cube. The density of the second block is nine. If you want to find out its mass, mass is given by density multiply volume, 9 multiply 2, it will give you 18 gram. So if you want to find out the density of the whole block, let's find out the total mass of the block. The, the, the mass of the first block is uh, 6 gram. The mass of the second block is 18 gram. So add them up and you will get 24 grams. And also we need, we need to find out the total volume of the block. And the volume of the first block is 1 centimeter cube. And the volume of the second block is two centimeter cube. So the total volume will be three centimeter cube. So if you want to find out the density of the whole thing, the formula for the density is mass divided by volume. And the total mass is 24 grams. And the total volume is three centimeter cube. So divide 24 by three, you get eight grams per centimeter cube. So the choice in the question number six is C. If you want to see the calculation which I have done on your screen, uh, you might be able to see question number six, the calculations I have shown here. So first of all, I calculated the volume of the first block. Then I calculated the mass of the first block. Then I calculated the volume of the second block. Then I calculated the mass of the second block. Then I found the density of the whole thing by the total mass divided by the total volume and the, my answer came out to be eight grams per centimeter cube i hope it's visible to you and you are able to do if you do it on a register you will be uh, very easily able to understand so my answer is eight grams per centimeter cube so c is the choice okay we are moving to the next question question number seven a diver of weight 500 newton stands at the end of a springboard that is two meter long and is fixed at point P. The springboard has a weight of 500 Newton. The center of mass of the springboard is in the center of the board. What is the total moment aboard the point P of the diver, of the diver and the board? There are two things, is, there are two forces acting. One is the weight of this man. The weight of this man is 500 Newton. It is acting here. It downward the pivot is at point p if i want to calculate the moment of this man the perpendicular distance between the pivot and the man's weight the, is two meter so its moment can be found by a 500 newton moment formula is f into d so if the force the weight is 500 newton multiplied with two meter you will get 1000 newton meter then we will calculate the moment produced by the uh, the weight of the of the springboard. The center of gravity or center of the mass of the springboard is in the center. 
the springboard's total length is 2 meter so the if the center of the gravity is at the center of the springboard then its distance from the pivot will be 1 meter and the weight of the springboard is 500 new uh, 500 newton so its moment will be f multiplied d 500 multiplied 1 it will be 500 newton meter so the total moment both the moments are clockwise moment produced by the weight of the man and the moment produced by the weight of the springboard you add or uh, add both of the both the moments so 1000 newton meter plus 500 newton meter the answer will be 1500 newton meter so the choice is d 1500 newton meter i can show you this paper work also you can see uh, on your screen question number uh i yeah on your screen can you see that question number uh 7 7 i found the moment of the man 500 multiplied 2 then i found the moment of the weight of the springboard 500 multiplied 1 then i calculated the total moment by adding those moments both the moments were clockwise that's why i added that so the resultant moment will be 1500 newton meter so the choice is d the choice is d i hope you understand this question number 8 is on your screen right now a tennis ball of mass 56 gram is traveling at 1500 meter per minute which expression is equals to kinetic energy in joules of the tennis ball you know if you want to find out the kinetic energy in joules uh, the formula for the kinetic energy is half 1 half mv square or in other words 1 by 2 multiply m mass and multiply square of the speed or the velocity and because we want the kinetic energy to be in joules so the mass should be in kg and the velocity or the speed must be in meter per second you know the mass given here is 56 gram it's not in kg so convert that into kg how you do that 56 grams you will divide 56 with 1000 it will be converted into kg so it will become 56 divided by 1000 it will become 0.056 and if you want to convert uh, uh, if you want to convert uh, uh, 15 meter per minute we want to convert it into, into meter per second in one minute there are 60 seconds so 1500 meter per minute 15 divided by 60 and it will be converted into meter per second and uh, the formula is 1 by 2 mv square so what is the where is the right choice uh, its choice is a let me show you the uh, the written how i did it okay so on your screen right now i think you are able to see me question number we are talking question number 8 okay you can see that here i mass was 56 grams i divided with 1000 and it is converted into kg the volume uh, the velocity was 1500 meter per minute i divided it with 60 converted into meter per second the answer is 25 meter per second kinetic energy is 1 by 2 mv square so 1 by 2 into 0.056 into 25 square so this expression is given there it is the a option i hope you understand this a is the option question number 8 question number 9 is on your screen in an electro hydroelectric power station 4.2 expo 5 kg of water passes through the turbines every second the turbines are at a height of 50 meter below the surface of the reservoir the gravitational field strength g is 10 newtons per kg assuming that assuming there are no energy losses losses what is the power output of the power station <clears throat> so if you want to find out the power the formula for the power is energy divided by time so i need to know okay, how much energy is involved the one energy and he they say that there is no energy losses so the water has potential energy when it falls from a height of 50 meter and that uh, energy that potential energy we call it potential energy 
uh, gravitational potential energy will convert into other forms of energy so we can calculate easily the gravitational potential energy the formula for the gravitational potential energy is mgh mass is 4.2 x per 5 kg g is 10 newton per kg and the height is 50 meter mgh potential energy so do this calculation and you will get the answer 2.1 x per 8 joules and the power can be calculated by energy divided by time the energy we just calculated is 2.1 x per 8 joules and the time taken is one second it gave you the time one second so divide 2.1 x per 8 joules with the one second and the answer will be 2.1 x per 8 watt i can show you its paperwork the paperwork and you can see the question number nine on your screen can you see the question number nine i first here you see first i calculated the potential energy mgh 4.2 x per 5 into 10 into 50 and the answer was 2.1 into 10 raised power 8 joules the power is energy divided by time and the energy was 2.1 x per 8 joules divided by one second and the answer is 2.1 x per 8 watts so this is the paperwork of the question number the solution of the question number nine and the choice is and the choice is d d is the choice 2.1 x per 8 8 watt okay Jee, we are moving to the next question the next question is the diagram shows a mercury manometer connected to a gas container the density of the mercury is 14,000 kg per meter cube the gravitational field strength g is 10 newton per kg what is the pressure difference between the gas in the container and the atmosphere for this purpose first of all i need to know what is the difference in the levels of the mercury in both the limbs of the manometer so see from this bottom level the height of this level of the mercury is 0 0.6 and uh, the the height of the level of the mercury in this limb is 0 0.20 so the difference between these two can be found by subtracting these two heights so 0 0.60 minus 0 0.20 and the answer will be 0 0.40 meter once i know the difference of the mercury level then i can calculate the pressure difference by the formula pressure is equal to rho g h where rho is the density g is the gravitational field strength and h is the level difference in the mercury in, me <clears throat> in meters so when you put the values there in the rho g h it will be 14,000 multiplied 10 multiplied 0 0.4 and the answer will be 56,000 pascal. So the choice is C. Let me show you its, its paperwork. In question 10, I think you can see, first of all, we calculated the difference in the level. The, in one limb, the level of the mercury was 0 0.60 from, uh, from the bottom. And in the other limb, the, it was 0 0.20. So different between them, subtract. you will get the difference 0 0.40 meter. Then the pressure formula is rho g h 14,000 density multiply g 10 multiply h which is 0 0.40 and you get the answer 56,000 pascal. I hope this is visible to you and you are able to understand it. Okay, so next question, question number 11 is on your screen. He says a gas range contains a fixed mass of air. The volume of the air is 240 centimeter cube and it exerts a pressure of 5 x per 4 pascal. The air is slowly compressed, keeping the temperature constant until the pressure is 1.5 x per 5 pascal. What is the final volume of the air? Because you see here, the gas pressure is involved and we have kept the temperature constant. So we can apply the formula P1 V1 equals to P2 V2. P1 value is given, that is 2400 cubic centimeter. And the, uh, sorry, P2, uh, sorry, P1 value is given, which is 5 x per 4. P1 value is 24, 240 centimeter cube. And the P2 value is 1.5 x per 5. And the V2 value we want to find out. So just put the values there and calculate the value of the V2. It will be 80 centimeter cube. I can show you its paperwork. I have done on a, on a register, you can see on your screen, you can see right now that uh, 
P1 V1 equals to P2 V2. We put the values of P1 V1 and P2. Uh, P2 sorry and V2. I made it alone. I made it subject to the formula and do the calculation. You will get the 80 centimeter cube. And the B is the option. I hope you have uh, understood. Question number 11, B part. Okay, we are moving to the next question. Question number 12, an extremely large increase in pressure is needed to compress a liquid. A gas can be compressed by a much smaller increase in pressure. Which statement is made? The, it's, it's very difficult to compress the liquid molecule. The basic reason is the repulsion, you know, the atoms or molecules, when you try to bring them close, very close to each other, they repel each other. So do you, because in the liquid, the molecules are already very close to each other and they have repulsion between them. And due to that repulsion, it's not possible. Uh, it's quite, uh, it's not possible to bring them further close because they are repelling with each other with a very strong force. So he says, why it's difficult to compress liquid? So the A, molecules repel each other very strongly when very close, that's the right answer. The B is the attractive force between molecules are small and large, is that strong? The molecules, uh, that's right. B is also right, but that is not the reason for the uh, difficulty in compression. The molecules in the gas collide with the wall of their container and rebound. That's true, but this has nothing to do with the compression. The molecules of liquid are constantly moving around. And that's true, but it has nothing to do with the, uh, the statement that why it is difficult to compress the liquid. So A is the choice. Question number 12, A is the choice. So we are moving to the next question. Question number, uh, we have on our on your screen, we have question number 13. He says, a dish, a dish of liquid is left on the la la laboratory bench. Some of the liquid evaporates. What happens and why? And, uh, you know, whenever the evaporation is taking place, the molecules which have the larger uh, kinetic energy, they escape from the surface of the liquid, leaving behind less energetic molecules in the body of the liquid. And thus, the average kinetic energy of the liquid drops. And due to this, the temperature of the liquid drops. So what is happening? The molecules uh, with the higher energies, they leave the liquid and the liquid cools. The liquid cools because liquid molecules have more energy than gas molecules. No, the liquid cools because faster moving molecules can, yeah, B is the answer. The liquid cools because faster moving molecules escape, leaving behind less uh, uh, slow molecules in the liquid. So B is the answer, the liquid cools because faster moving molecules escape. Question number 14 is on your screen. Uh, solid wax is melted in a boiling tube and then allowed to cool. The graph shows the cooling curve. What is happening between X and Y? Because when you boiled the wax, it will be converted into, uh, sorry, not boiled, you melted it. And it will be converted into liquid and then you allow it to cool down. So what will happen slowly, the temperature will drop and then the wax will start solidifying. It will start converting from liquid state to solid state. And when this will happen, the cooling curve will become flat. And here he has shown uh, on the cooling curve, you see he's, he has shown here the thing was in liquid form and XY, the graph has become flat. When the graph becomes flat, it means that the state is changing. So there, here the thing was in liquid form, so here a state change is taking place, it's cooling down, and obviously what is happening here, the liquid is converting into solid. Okay, so what is happening at X and Y, the liquid is turning to solid. So B is the answer, question number 14, B is the answer. I hope you understand it. Question number 15 is on your screen, what is meant by uh, heat capacity, what is meant by the heat capacity of a solid object. Heat capacity means the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of a body through one degree centigrade. That's the standard definition of the heat capacity. 
thermal energy required to cause a unit temperature rise? C is the answer. Question number 15, C is the answer. Question number 16 is on your skin. The distance between the ice point and the steam point in a liquid in glass thermometer is 20 centimeter. Ice point, the temperature will be zero. Steam point, the temperature will be 100 degrees centigrade. And he says uh, the length of the mercury column uh, between the steam point and the ice point on a thermometer is 20 centimeters. He says then he put the thermometer somewhere and the, th the thread of the thermometer, the th thread of the mercury in the thermometer is 12 centimeter long. What is the temperature? So I can show you my paperwork and uh, let me go to the next page. Yeah, on your, you can see question number. I hope you can see. Uh, yeah, question number 16 is on your screen. So, E0 means the temperature at ice point and uh, T1 means the temperature at the steam point and T2 means the unknown temperature. T2 minus T0 divided by T1 minus T0 is equals to L2 minus L0 divided by L1 minus L0. T2, we want to find out that temperature minus T0, T0 is 0 degree centigrade. T1 is 100 degree centigrade minus T0 is 0 degree centigrade. It's equals to the length of the mercury, L2 minus L0, the length of the mercury when it was in the unknown temperature, that is 12. And L1 minus L0, that is the distance between the steam point and the ice point that is given in the question statement that is 20. So T2 minus 0 divided by 100 minus 0 equals to 12, 12 and by 20. So T2 can be calculated. This 100 can go on the other side, 12 into 100 divided by 20 and the answer will be 60. So the answer will be 60, which is the B choice there. It's a very famous question. This type of questions come a lot in the paper. So you should be, uh, you should master this concept. Question number 17 is on your screen. A thermocouple is a type of thermometer which statement applies to the thermocouple. Thermocouple, it, may, it can measure rapidly varying temperature. That is true. It must be made from three different matters. No, its resistance decreases when one junction is heated. No, we don't know that. The distance between the two junctions increases as the temperature increases. That is also wrong. So the very best statement is A. It can measure rapidly varying temperature. For 17, the A is the option. Question number 18. A heater is designed to radiate thermal energy. Which change to design decreases the thermal energy emitted by radiation? If the surface of the, of the heater is shiny, then it will radiate less heat so d is the answer a shinier surface for question number eight 18 d is the answer question number 19 is on your screen a sound wave in a solid is represented by a series of lines the diagram shows compressions and rare fractions at one instant in time which statement is correct all particles on one line move in the same direction at the same time, you know, these lines, they are basically representing, uh, you know, wave fronts. So all the points in a, on a wave front, they move in the same direction. So A is the answer. All the particles on the one line move in the same direction at the same time. So for 19, A is the option. The rest of the lines, the given statements, the direction of travel of the sound wave is parallel to the lines. Uh, no, that's right. That's wrong. The distance between a compression and the suggested wave factor is a wavelength. That's wrong. That's half the wavelength. The pattern of the lines represents a transverse wave. No, it is representing a uh, it's representing a longitudinal wave. So A is the best answer. So for question number nineteen, question number nineteen, A is the option. All particles on one line move in the same direction at the same time. Okay, we are moving to the next question. Question number 20 is on your screen. So which diagram shows reflection by a plane mirror? You know, uh, he has uh, in the first A part, the lines 
incident rays they are parallel to each other so if it's a plane mirror after reflection they will still be parallel to each other so a is the very best answer and the b is wrong because before uh, incident rays are parallel reflected rays should be also parallel to each other b c and d they are wrong here the reflected rays are not parallel again here the reflected rays are not parallel here the reflected rays are parallel but the incident rays are not parallel so that is not possible so b c d they are wrong a is the right incident rays are parallel to each other after reflection from a plane mirror they still be parallel to each other reflected rays should also be parallel to each other so question number 20 a is the option okay on your screen now we have light is incident on a plastic block of refractive index 1.5 the angle of incidence is 50 degree what is the angle of refraction you know uh, we for refractive index uh, we have a formula refractive index is equals to the ratio of the sine of the angle of incidence to the sine of the angle of refraction i can show you its paper work i have done it uh, on your screen can you see that n is equals to sin i by sin r n is refractive index so we have the value of the refractive index 1.5 is equals to sin angle of incidence was 50 1.5 is equal to sin 50 divided by sin r so if you bring the sin r on the on the left side and take 1.5 to the other side and then take the sin to the other side to make r alone the sin will become sin inverse so sin inverse of sin 50 divided by 1.5 so the answer will be 30.7 approximately 31 degree so the options in the so the option will be a choice question number 21 a choice i have shown you how its uh, steps are done you can do those calculations on a on a, on a register or a, on a copy okay ji on your screen now we have Uh, question number 22 a solid plastic cylinder is immersed in a liquid of refractive index 1.4 light traveling in the plastic cylinder strikes the inside surface at an angle of incidence of 70 degree the light undergoes total internal reflection what are the values of the critical angle in the plastic and the refractive index of the plastic you know the total internal reflection takes place if this an uh, inner material is denser and the outer material is has less density <clears throat> or in other words the refractive index of this inner material the plastic cylinder should be higher and the refractive index of the outer material should be less that's the that's a fact that's a rule for the that's a condition for the total internal reflection to take place and Another condition for the total internal reflection is that the incidence should be greater than the critical angle. So it means that the critical angle less than seventy, and the refractive index of the plastic inside the plastic cylinder should be more than one point four. So I think question number twenty-two C is the option. The critical angle should be less than seventy. And the refractive index of the plastic should be more than 1.4. Question number 23. On your screen, you can see question number. Yeah. Question number 23 is on your screen. The ray diagrams X and Y show two ways in which a thin converging lens produces an image that is larger than the object. so you can see there are two uh, two images are given two figures are given x and y in the x figure you can see the image formed is large enlarged and it is virtual in the y the image is enlarged but it is real so which uh, which devices use a lens the x situation that is used by a magnifying glass and the y situation is used by a projector okay so x is used by a magnifying glass and the y is used by a projector 
so for question number 23 b is the option magnifying glass and projector i hope you understand question number 24 is on your screen the diagram shows the electromagnetic spectrum with three components named the spectrum is in order from long wavelength to short wavelength which component of the spectrum is used in a sun bed to produce a produce a sun tan you remember this is, you have to kind of memorize the uses of the electromagnetic waves the sun for the sun bed or sun tanning we use uv lights uv lights so if you remember the code word for this uh, electromagnetic spectrum we say ronald mcdonald is very ugly except gary ronald mcdonald is very ugly except gary ronald is radio mcdonald is microwaves is is infrared v is visible light and then ugly u u stands for the ultraviolet uv light so here the c is representing the ultraviolet which is used in the for question number 24 c is the option which row gives the speed of the sound in air in water and in the steel is a famous fact which is a fact now you have to kind of uh, you should know this the the sound is traveling slowest in the air the faster in the liquid and fastest in solids so a is the option the speed of air speed of sound in air is 330 meter per second in water it is 1500 meter per second and in steel it is 6000 meter per second so for 25 the a is the option question number 24 is on steel a compass needle is moved to different places around a strong bar magnet which position shows incorrectly the direction of the compass needle which compass needle is showing the wrong direction remember the compass needle always follow the magnetic lines there in whatever direction the magnetic lines will be pointing the compass needle should also be aligned with the magnetic lines in the same direction in which the magnetic lines are represented now from the north pole the magnetic lines come out and from the south pole the magnetic lines go in so the the compass which a is showing correct direction compass d is also showing correct direction compass c is also showing direct uh, correct direction compass b is showing wrong direction because from the north the magnetic lines will come out and then they will go into the south so b is showing the incorrect incorrect direction so b is for 26 b is the option question number 27 is on your screen a plastic block is wrapped with the silk handkerchief and the block becomes sharp what causes the block to become sharp you see uh, uh, many times when we do we learn this topic and we have, your teacher must have told you that whenever you rub two insulators with each other and charges are created and in this explanation we never say that positive charges were transferred we always 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 say the electrons were given or we say the electrons were received okay it's a business of electrons no positive charges okay so only the electrons are given or electrons are taken in no transfer of positive charge okay so you never in your expression you write uh, the positive charges were given or positive charges were received so is what causes the block to become charged negative electrons flow from the handkerchief to the block that could be the answer sir and then the a part is negative electron flow from the handkerchief and the positive electron positive flows from the block no 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 positive charge and c and d are also wrong because it says positive electrons flow positive the positive electrons don't flow only the negative electrons they are given or received so i think uh, b is the answer question number 27 b is the answer 
Okay, the, on your screen right now, you can see. Uh, on your screen, you can see question number 28. He says a negatively charged rod is brought near to an uncharged metal sphere on an insulating stand. Which diagram shows the charge is when you will bring a negatively charged sphere near the left end of a metal sphere, which is on an insulating stand, because the metal has free electrons, due to the presence of this negative rod, the electrons on the left side will be repelled and they will move to the right side. So what will happen on the left side of the metal sphere positive charge will appear and on the right side of the metal sphere negative charge will appear so the correct diagram is the d diagram question number 28 d diagram okay ji on your screen right now we have uh, Okay. He says a six volt battery, three resistors, and three voltmeters are connected in the in the circuit shown. The reading of the voltmeter one is two volts. And what is the reading on the voltmeter two? And what is the reading on the voltmeter three? You see here, if you pay attention a little bit, the battery is providing the EMF of the battery is six volts. So six volts are provided. The reading of the voltmeter 1 is 2 volts. This voltmeter 2 is on a resistor which is parallel to this resistor. So you must remember that uh, the two resistors which are parallel to each other, they will have the same potential drop. So if the voltmeter 1 is telling you 2 volts, then the voltmeter number 2 should also tell 2 volts because they will have the same potential drop. If 2 volts are dropped here, <coughs> And the battery provided a EMF of 6 volt. So how much volt is, is are left for the voltmeter 3? So if here we have total 2 volts drop, the total voltmeter, the EMF of the battery is 6 volt. 6 minus 2, 4. So volt num voltmeter 3 will be showing you a reading of 4. So voltmeter 2 should show 2 and voltmeter 3 should show 4. So, 29 question, the answer is A. Okay, you on your screen, he says uh, a piece. It's question number 30. Let me give you this time. Okay. He says a piece of wire has a resistance of 16 ohm. The wire is 20 centimeter long and has a cross sectional area of 2 millimeter square. Which wire of the same material has a resistance of 8 ohm? Okay, because in the in his answer, he has uh, given us different dimensions, length and the cross-sectional area. He gave us four samples, but they are made of the same material. Because they are made of the same material, so what will happen? They will have the same resistivity as the, as the first resistor. resistor. So let me, first of all, let me show you its paperwork. The length of the sample A and the cross-sectional sample A is given. And this resistance is A. So we will calculate res resistivity for everybody. Okay, in, on your screen, can you see I have shown here. First of all, I calculated the resistivity. The formula for the resistivity is the resistance multiplied cross-sectional area divided by length. So the, the first resistor which he gave us is the resistance was 16 and its cross section area was 2 millimeter square and the length was 20 centimeter. So the resistivity is 1.6. Now I will calculate the resistivity of the other now I will calculate the resistivity of the other other four samples for A, R multiplied A divided by L, 8 multiplied by 1 divided by 10, and the resistivity is 0 0.1, 0 0.8, so it's not the same. For B sample, 8 multiplied by 4 divided by 10, the answer is 3.2, 3 
and for C sample, eight multiplied by one divided by twenty is zero point four, and for the D sample, uh, eight multiplied by four divided by twenty, and its answer is one point six. So sample D has the same resistivity. So D is the right choice. It's, it's a little tricky question, not a simple one. It's a tricky question. Remember its paperwork. Question number thirty-one is on your screen. Let me reduce the size. Okay. He says the battery in a circuit containing two identical cells connected in parallel. Which row shows the relationship between current I1 and I2 and gives the electromotive force? You see, these two cells they are connected parallel to each other. So when you connect the cells in parallel to each other, they do not add up. Their EMFs do not add up. So two volt cell and a two volt cell connected in parallel. So the total EMF of this whole battery thing will be two volt. The current coming out of the battery is I1, and current going back to the battery is I2. And we know that this is the law, uh, Kirchhoff's law, that the the current coming and current going back in a loop they are equal. So I1 and I2 should be equal. And the EMF of the cell is two volts. So for thirty-one, I think the answer will be C. C choice. For thirty-one, the answer is C choice. I one and I two they are equal. The current coming out of the battery and current going back to the battery they should be same. And the uh, EMF of the battery is two volts. They do not add up when they are connected in the cells. If they are connected in parallel, they do not add up. Okay, the diagram shows the circuit for a hair dryer. A hair dryer, dryer, sorry. And he says the diagram shows the circuit of a hair dryer. The fan motor has a power rating of 0 0.10 kilowatt, and the heaters each have a rating of 0 0.40 kilowatt. The cost of electric electricity is eight cents per kilowatt hour. What is the cost of running the hair dryer? For two hours, the time is given two hours, uh, with the switches P and Q closed and switch R open. When I close the switch P and the Q and R remain open, it means that fan is used and this one one heater is used. The other one is not used. So we can calculate the cost of the electricity. The cost of the electricity is very simple to calculate. Let me show you this paperwork. The cost of the electricity. Is power multiply time multiply price. Then you are choosing two things. You are using a fan and a heater. So their power, and we have to take the power in kilowatts. Them luckily they were given in kilowatts. So what is the total power being used? Is 0 0.1 kilowatt plus 0 0.40 kilowatt. And for how much time they are used? Two hours. And what is the price of one kilowatt hour? Let's say it says. So just put the values in that total power, multiply two, multiply eight, and you will get eight cents. So the bill or the cost of the electricity will be eight cents. So the choice is D for thirty-two. Choice is D. You see, you have to do this calculation on your notebook. When you will do it yourself, then you will actually understand it. I hope you understand it right now, but do it yourself on a copy. Okay. Why question number thirty-three? Why is the coil of an electric motor wound on a on a soft iron cylinder? So why we do that? We why we use a soft iron cylinder and we wind the coil on that because it increases the magnetic field strength to strengthen the magnetic field. So D is the answer. Question number thirty-three. D is the answer to so strengthen the magnetic field. On your screen, we have uh, next question. Yeah, on your screen we have a straight wire carries a current into the paper. The diagram shows three magnetic line field lines around the wire. The current in the wire increases. You have increased the current. What is the direction of the field lines, and which change occur to the field lines as the current? Then you will. You have current going into the screen, so 
we can tell the direction of the magnetic lines around it by the right hand rule for the straight conductor use your right hand if the current is going into the into the screen your thumb is is in the direction of the current and the curls of your finger they are in the direction of the of the of the magnetic lines they are showing the direction of the magnetic lines so current is going into the screen my curls uh curls of my finger are telling me that the direction of the magnetic field will be clockwise and when you will increase the amount of current the direction will still be the same clockwise but the magnetic field around the wire will become stronger and when the magnetic field becomes stronger those circle the circle the magnetic lines they come close to each other if you want to represent a stronger magnetic field line magnetic field you represent the magnetic field lines closer to each other so i think the a is the option question number 34 a is the option the direction of the magnetic field lines is clockwise and when you will increase the amount of current the the direction will be still clockwise but they will move close to each other on your screen we can see we have question number 35 which which particles which particles are emitted by a hot metal uh, hot metal filament when you know whenever we heat up a filament metal filament electrons are given out we call it the thermonic emission and during that process electrons are given out so p is the answer question number 35 g is the answer okay next question i have on your screen is 36 question number 36 is on your screen He says a circuit includes a thermistor and a light dependent resistor LDR. The resistance of the thermistor and the resistance of the LDR both increase, which change causes this. You know we want to; they are connected uh, to each other, and uh, they want the resistance of the thermistor and the LDR to go up. For this part, the thermistor's resistance will increase if thermistor resistance will increase if the temperature drops and the uh, ldr resistance will in increase if it becomes dark so the temperature should uh, decrease and decrease the brightness should also decrease when the temperature will decrease the thermistor resistance will be high and when the brightness will decrease the resistance of the ldr will also becomes higher so for 36a is the option the temperature should decrease and the brightness should decrease now on your screen we have question number 37 a sample contains atoms of an isotope that has a half life of 7.2 years which quantity have every 7.2 years you see when half life has passed half of the atoms of that isotope would have decayed and they will convert into some other element to some other nucleus so the number of atoms of that isotope would have become half c is the option question number 37 c is the option okay the next question is question number 36 a little tricky question he says a beam of uh, okay a beam consisting of alpha beta and gamma rays passes into a magnetic field which diagram shows this part you know when you will pass the these radiations through a magnetic field there will be no effect on the gamma rays so gamma rays will go straight undeflected and you no know, beta beta has very small size that's why it will have a larger deflection its turn will be very sharp and because the alpha has larger size its deflection is very smooth it's not abrupt deflection okay so b looks the right answer the rest of are wrong answers okay the gamma should go straight alpha should have very smooth bend and the beta should have very sharp bend because beta has very small size that's why 
So B is the answer. 38 B is the answer. On your screen, now you can see we have question number 39. A narrow beam of alpha particles is fired at a thin piece of gold foil. What is the final what is the final direction of the largest number of alpha particles? This is a Marsden experiment. They bombarded alpha particles on, uh, on a gold foil. And most of the alpha particles, they went straight through the gold foil, undeflected. So A is the answer. So the, because most of them went through the gold foil, undeflected. A is the answer. 39A is the answer. On your screen, we have question number 40. It says, a nucleus of, of phosphorus emits a beta particle to form a new nucleus. What is the nucleon number and what is the proton number of the new nucleus? You know, when beta particle is given out, when beta decay happens, the proton number of the daughter nucleus is one more than the parent nucleus and the mass number do not change listen carefully what i'm saying when the beta particle is given out the daughter nucleus will have one more proton number and mass number will not change the nucleon number will not change so the daughter nucleus which in this situation will be formed will have uh proton number one more one 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 more than the 15 it will have proton number 16 and the mass number or the nucleon number will not change it should be 32 so 32 and 16 so d looks the option question number 40 d is the option so that's it for the today uh, for today's work uh i hope that uh, you are able to understand this paper and have a good day.